Hello, my friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit lead our words as well as your understanding. Open your understanding so that we may all enjoy the benefits, the benefits which the Word of God brings to those who believe in it. A person does not need to deserve in order to receive from God his blessings or his favors. A person doesn't need to deserve. And that's where the greatness of faith is. Because when we manifest our faith in the Word of God, then this faith which comes from God Himself, gives us the certainty that He heard us and that for sure He will answer us in His time, the moment He sees fit. However, there are people who receive faith right there and then, they manifest this faith right there and then, and they receive the answer right there and then as well. It's the reality. But there are those who have faith. They remain in the faith while they wait an answer from God. Who is who? I don't know. I don't know. Not even I know. I don't know. I just know one thing, that what he promised will be fulfilled. And this is the faith, the faith that works in our lives. So imagine you, I think this way, I believe this way. Imagine you if if I had faith to move mountains, to do this, to do that, to do the other. So, how myself would live? I would live believing that my faith was enough. And therefore, I would stop believing in the author of faith in the provider of faith, to believe in myself. In reality, my friend, God allows situations, adversities, problems, difficulties. He allows them so that we won't become proud and think that we are someone, that we deserve these, or we are superior to other people. So God keeps us there, in, within our limits. But one thing I know, even if my problems are not going to be resolved, all of them as I want, even if my prayers haven't been answered, even still, I believe in God. I believe that my God will remain faithful to His Word. And everything that He does is perfect. Everything He does is good. Everything He does is pleasing. But He doesn't allow us to go beyond our limits, which is what, what happened to Paul, isn't it? Paul was, let's say, one of the most inspired, one of the apostles who most received revelations from the Word of God. And back then, they didn't have the Bible like today, only the Old Testament. So the Apostle Paul received revelations, which due to these revelations, he obviously felt, let's say, blessed. However, it was placed in him a thorn in his flesh, and, and this thorn 
is to buffet him, in other words, to make him remember that he, even though he had seen Jesus, even though he had had extraordinary revelations from God, even though he had gone up to the third heaven, still he was a human being. He was a man. He was a human being. So, in order for him not to be boastful, in order for him not to become proud and to think that he was better than the other apostles, so a thorn was placed in his flesh. A thorn was placed in his flesh, a messenger of Satan. By the way, I even prayed for this thorn to be removed three times, and he said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> but you see that the Apostle Paul had had extraordinary revelations from God, magnificent, but the problem with the thorn in the flesh was not resolved. So sometimes, perhaps you are an assistant, a pastor, a servant of God, you are living within the standards of God's word with a, a good behavior. You have a good character according to God's character. And then you face a problem. You face difficult situations like sicknesses, infirmities, pains, problems with your children or with your parents, with your wife, your husband, and so on, you face problems. So, God allows you to have these problems for you not to fall into pride or vanity, the vanity of the knowledge and revelations that you've had concerning God. So, don't don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Don't be dismayed, down. God is in control of all things. All things, all things. The devil doesn't do anything without God allowing him to do so. You can see that in the story of Job, for example, the first chapters of the book, you can see how the devil only touched Job because God allowed him to. God allowed as well a thorn to be placed in Paul's flesh. He also allows the thorns in our flesh. That's the reality, my friend. So, it doesn't mean, though, that you are not of God. It doesn't mean that you have a demon. As some ignorant people say concerning these, oh, you see that person has a problem like this, there's a demon there. No, not necessarily. If the person lives a life obeying the word of God, within the word of God, their conscience is not accusing them, then you know that our conscience is, is our judge is the judge that God placed inside of us. So our conscience, when it is clean, then we live at peace with God, at peace with ourselves, even though we have problems. So don't be afflicted, don't be discouraged, don't, don't be like that, because that's what the devil wants. He wants you to be discouraged. He wants us to be discouraged because of the struggles and the problems. But those who believe, they persevere also. They remain in the faith. I will tell you something. I never, I never in all of my life as a Christian, I never thought of giving up. I already felt a lot of pain. I've felt and groaned a lot. But I never thought of giving up and, you know, surrendering and turning my back on God and going, taking care of my business. No. Why? 
because the Holy Spirit would comfort me. He would keep me. Let me tell you an experience I've had. I'm not sure if I had spoken about this before, but it's a very interesting experience. Very, very, but very strong. There was a time, perhaps this will help you, there was a time that I was leaving the, my house. I lived near the church, then in Abolição, in Rio de Janeiro, in the old funeral parlor. I lived near the church and I was walking to church from my house to the church. It was about 2 p.m. The meeting was at 3 o'clock. I was walking on the street. I was walking. And as I was walking, I was praying. Praying what, Bishop? I was saying, my God, come on, we want to help others. We want to do good to people. We want to give them what you have given us. And then we have all these problems. I was already facing a lot of persecution with the justice system in Brazil. My God, we want to help others. And we have to face all of these problems, court cases and so on. But I was very sad, very discouraged because of the problems, because I thought like this, well, if I am helping people, I have to be well, I have to be happy. God has to keep me healthy and happy. But it didn't happen. I was lamenting with God concerning that situation walking in the broad daylight, praying with my eyes open, and then the Holy Spirit, how wonderful. Before I arrived in the church, the Holy Spirit said to me like this, listen to what he said, do not fear, I'm with you. Great are the struggles, but the victory is certain. That's all he said. The victory is certain. When I heard that word, that the Holy Spirit spoke in my conscience, wow, I held my head up high, I was walking, and then I started walking faster to get to church already, to talk to people and to pray and to deliver them and to do what he wanted me to do. This has been, what, around 45 years ago. So, God comforted me. He kept me calm. He didn't take away my problems. I had to face them. I had to go through the desert. But he gave me conditions to live in the desert. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Did you understand, my friend? I was reading a while ago a comment that a person who was converted, an assistant, was an assistant and all, and she was helping the church actively and afterwards she said, oh, come on, oh my God, I help others, but I cannot help myself. I have this problem and the other. And the devil attacking her until the day that the devil defeated her and she finally gave up, surrendered to her desires, to her lust, to her vanity, and she fell. And then came the disgrace, came the pain and bitterness of having abandoned the work. So, my friend, pay close attention. Faith, the faith God gives us, is not for us to rejoice with victories only, but it's for us to remain in the faith persevere in the faith so that we may live from faith to faith and we will then finally take possession of the kingdom of heaven. And Paul says like this, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, which means the Jews, the ones he was referring to, the believers here, the Jews, those who believed in God, 
and the Greek are the ones who didn't believe in God. So he said, listen, there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. There is no distinction between them. Why? For the same Lord, the same Lord overall, is rich to all who call upon him. How wonderful. So it does not matter if you are a Jew or if you are a Greek. It doesn't matter if you are a Christian, if you live with a healthy faith, your conscience is clean, and you have faith to keep going and fighting, or if you are someone who doesn't even have this faith, you are someone, let's say, who is alienated concerning the things of God. But it doesn't matter. God is rich to all, to those who believe and to those who don't believe, but he's rich to them all. When he healed the ten lepers, men, all of them were healed. All ten of them were blessed. However, only one out of ten, only one came back to say thanks. And that one, besides being healed physically, he was also healed in his soul. So people have to understand that God is rich to all those who believe in him. It doesn't matter if you are facing problems or not. He is rich towards you. He is rich towards everyone. He is rich towards the Catholics, the Spiritists, Evangelicals, Muslims. He is rich towards the Jews, the Hindus. He is rich towards everyone, everybody. Of course, to those who believe in him, who believe in his word. So when the person believes in his word, then he is rich to that person and they are blessed, whether they deserve it or not. It's not the, the question here. What matters is that they believe in His Word. If you believe in the Word of God, God is rich to you, and He will answer, attend to your affliction, to your need and anguish. Now, you have to remain, to keep that belief. It's not just when you ask. If you asked and you didn't receive it straight away, then wait, trust. Hold on to him. That's why it is to trust. It's when you remain in faith, in that expectation, in that hope that you are going to see your requests, your needs being answered. This is how the Holy Spirit works. And that's why we've been emphasizing this. You have to receive the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, it will be difficult for you, very difficult for you to conquer the kingdom of heaven. Very difficult, very difficult. Unless you are already in the last days of your life and you say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, then you are saved right there and then. But you're also going to die and go to heaven. Thank God. You're going to wake up, you sleep here and wake up in heaven. But if you do not believe, what can we do? What can God do for you? He is rich to all who cry out to him. His, his reach to all who call upon him. It's written here. I will even leave the text here on the post for you to meditate on this well and see what it means for you because perhaps you are a person that needs indeed to tear up your soul before God and say, Oh Lord, you promised it's written here, I need an answer now. Do you have this faith? Then use your faith, all right? Tomorrow, Wednesday, as it happens every Wednesday, we are going to have the night of the soul. I will be here in the Temple of Solomon at 8 p.m. sharp. And we are going to be speaking about this as well and other subjects as well. You who want to have faith to remain standing, you have to hear the Word of God. Because from the Word of God is where faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And from faith comes the character of God to you. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.